So it's probably helpful to know where exactly this happens. The disciples were sent out two by two to heal and to teach, um, and they had very productive time. So that's where our first part came from, was right after that. And then after that happens the feeding of the 5,000, and Jesus sends the disciples ahead of them, and um, then he, he meets them in their boat while he's walking on water, and they are frightened, and um, do not be afraid, I am with you. So all of that happens in chapter 6. It's kind of amazing. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Imagine a busy trauma emergency center. All the rooms are filled and hopping with activity. What happened here? Dr. Raymond asked the emergency room staff as he took one look at the patient laying on the table. A baseball to the left temple, said one of the technicians. It looks rough. There's quite a bit of swelling there. And one close look at the x-rays, and Dr. Raymond groaned. Without immediate surgery, the swelling would cause permanent damage and possibly even death. He started shouting order, orders like a commander in a battle. And the staff around him began to swing into action. And then the ear nurse said, Dr. Raymond, there is one problem. This boy's family has no insurance. No insurance? None? The nurse shook her head, no. And he muttered, what kind of people don't carry insurance? Unemployed parents who worked at the packing plant, replied the nurse. They are still on strike and they don't know how much longer. How can I forget that, sighed Dr. Raymond. It makes the TV news every evening and the paper every morning. But that's beside the point. This kid needs surgery now if he's going to have a chance. Do you want me to call Bill Fletcher to see if he can work something out in lieu of insurance, asked the nurse. And glancing at the boy, Dr. Raymond snapped. I'm not waiting for any hospital administrator to decide whether this boy lives or not. Don't waste your time on the phone. Prep this kid and let's get rolling. The emergency room buzzed with urgent purpose while Dr. Raymond went to talk to the child's parents. Quickly, he explained the danger of the swelling already threatening his the boy's brain and told them operating immediately was the only way to give him a chance. The boy's father stuttered as he spit out, we have no insurance, but I will do anything. I will pay every month for the rest of my life. I can work an extra job. Please, please help my son. And there was desperation and fear in his eyes. Dr. Raymond was deeply moved by the man's plea for help, and he compassionately responded, I will do what I can for your son. I want to assure you that surgery is our best choice. Please don't worry about what it's going to cost. And... I give you my word that it will not be more than you can handle. And as he walked away, he muttered to himself, even if I have to pay for it myself. As one having good insurance, I can't imagine how scary it is for families who cannot afford to have insurance, especially when there's an accident 
or unexpected health injuries or unexpel unexpected health issues. So this story reminds me a little bit about what's happening in our gospel lesson today. The father and mother are feeling desperate and helpless, just like the crowds, begging to touch even the fringe of Jesus' cloak. Huge crowds of people hungering and searching for healing of their bodies, minds, and spirit. And just like Dr. Raymond has compassion for this boy and his parents, Jesus has compassion for all those faces looking at him. Now, Jesus and the disciples came to this place for a much, for much needed rest, re relaxation, and renewal. But now they have more important things to do, things that can't wait. The people following Jesus have no one to help them, and they are helpless. And the people gathering around Jesus are desperate for more than healing. In fact, Jesus looks at them, and he sees that they are horribly lost, like sheep without a shepherd. Not only are they counted as lost to the world because of their afflictions, but they apparently also feel that they are lost to God. The world counts such shepherdless people as lost to God and forsaken by God. So these human beings feel like they have nowhere to turn for hope. They have no shepherd, and so they find no rest and no peace. But Jesus has compassion for them and stays by their side to, to not only heal them, but to also teach them many things. Jesus says, I am here. I will take care of you. And don't worry about what it will cost. And even, don't worry, even if I have to pay for it myself. In Jesus, the desperate and the sick find rest, and his compassion goes beyond spending time with them. His, his compassion leads him all the way to the cross and the grave. And on the cross, he pays the price for all the sin and sickness in this world. On the cross, Jesus provides rest and help for every person who will ever be lost or restless. And that, dear friends, includes all of us. Because Jesus Christ shows God's deepest compassion for all the lost on the cross, we know that God will not dispense with us, he will not forsake us, and he will not abandon us. Instead, God will seek us out and shepherd us in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we can rest in security that we have a divine shepherd to guard us and to guide us. In Jesus, we can personally rest in the assurance that God is with us and for us always, today, tomorrow, and forever. Saint Augustine put it this way, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. We long and we hunger to connect with God and to have a relationship with God. And there is a place in our heart that hungers to be filled with God's love. Can you imagine what it was like for those crowds of people who didn't know God? In Jesus, we find consolation in the news that God will not rest until he has fully restored our relationship with him. 
God will not rest until he has knocked down the walls that divide and separate us from God and one another. And God will not rest until he makes us one, one body in Christ. And when we are restless or unsure, we have Psalm 23 to speak to us, to bring us comfort. It says, he revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. These words comfort us and give us hope. Through God, we find healing and rest for our souls, and we find that in Jesus, and that is a good thing. And because we have experienced rest in healing, the Holy Spirit leads us in gentleness to reach out to others with compassion, just like Jesus did for us in need. And just like Dr. Raymond was moved to help that young boy, and by the way, he did survive and is doing well, may all know that Christ, may all know Christ's compassion through our words and actions. May all know Christ's compassion that we reveal that Jesus is alive in our hearts and there's enough room for Jesus to go around to everyone. And may we assure them that they don't need expensive insurance to receive Jesus' care and healing and rest and love. Jesus is our shepherd, the good shepherd. And through his gentle spirit, we have what we hunger for and we have what we need. Thanks be to God.